Welcome to the New Heights Show on Education. Education. I'm Pamela Clark, founder and director of the New Heights Educational Group. And I'm here with David Smith, the founder of Silicon Valley High School, who has helped us get these podcasts produced and delivered to you. Yes, Pamela, when we saw the great things that you and your army of volunteers were achieving at New Heights, we wanted to get involved. We're happy to work with you to leverage the internet and make quality education accessible and affordable to everyone, everywhere. Thank you, David. We appreciate Silicon Valley High School helping us to get these podcasts out to the hundreds of thousands of listeners from all over the world. So I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, welcome to the New Heights Show on Education. This is your host, Pamela Clark, and this is the um, Education in the News show. And so welcome back. We're going to get right back into it because there's always a lot of news stories and things to cover. Uh, The first one is from the Foundation Center News. And it says Georgetown receives $10.5 million for technology and ethics. The gift from the alumni and her husband who wish to remain anonymous will establish the technology, ethics, and society chair in the College of Arts and Sciences and enable the Georgetown Ethics Lab to create programming and undergraduate courses focused on technology, ethics, and society, and support an endowed scholarship fund. Next thing I have to share from you is actually from k12dive.com, and they wrote this really great article that I wanted to share with everybody, and it's called The Issue of School Redesign, if not now, when? So um, you can look it up on that site if you want to see the whole article in its entirety. It says, The growing burdens facing schools demand on rethinking of how school designed from the ground up. Um, Daniel Dominic is an executive director of AASA, the School Superintendent Association, And Jeff Wetzler is co-founder of Transcend Education, a nonprofit focused on innovation in school school design. The growing number of superintendents, building leaders, and teachers exiting the education profession is creating a vicious overload on those who remain, as well as on the students who are trying to learn and grow in the communities in which they live. It's time we rethought the design of school instead of continuing to put more burdens and band-aids on a system in distress. Currently, we ask schools to educate young people. We ask them to, pro- to provide solutions to our society's underinvestment in equitable health care, child care, housing, food security, employment, technology, access, and more. Schools and the people who work in them, because they are deeply care deeply about the children and families they serve, willingly take on more and more of the social burden, often without additional funding or training. When, what, when some students come to school hungry and in dirty clothes, the school offers breakfast, lunch, and weekend food. And in building laundry, and in building laundry, If other students don't offer or don't have broadband to access their assignments, the school buys hotspots and creates mobile Wi-Fi bus service. Now, repeat those demands in tens of thousands of schools across an entire education system. Circumstances surrounding the pandemic and the challenges that have escalated since February 2020 are immeasurable. Schools have added responsibility of COVID-19 testing and monitoring, contact tracing, and hybrid and online learning. Meanwhile, school personnel being threatened in some cases, violence has occurred against them. Across, Across the country, some people no longer disagree vocally, but abusively. No wonder there are mass exits of educators. Our organization, the AA. I'm sorry, the AASA, the School Superintendent Association, 
and transcend work with thousands of school communities and systems leaders across the country. We clearly see that we need to support school communities as they respond to urgent needs and recover from traumas of the past two years. It is also evident to us that we need to grow our collective efforts to reinvent our overburdened education system as we support response and recovery, recovery efforts. Reinvention needs to start now, not after we've dealt with the crisis of the movement. Given the uncertainties of the world in which we live, there will, be, there will always be a crisis of the moment. What lovers are there for redesigning the system, structures, places, and spaces that children learn? Earlier this year, the, AS, the AASA released an American imperative, a new vision of public schools. Resulting from the Learning 2025, the National Commission on Student-Centered, Equity-Focused, Future-Driven Education. Meanwhile, Transcend authored a white paper that was titled, Three Jobs That Matter for School Communities Navigating the COVID World. Together, these reports outline a bold vision and specific suggestions for designing a different, more reasonable education system where educators, students, and families do school in a far more effective, future-focused, and community-embedded way. School reinvention can no longer be schools going at it alone as first responders for the community. Rather, sustainable classrooms and schools must be research-based, deployed the latest science on child development that shows how learning can be designed for each child to have their individual needs met and community embedded act activating local assets, values, dreams, and partners. Sound utopian? It's impossible, and it's already happening now. Or it's possible, they say, and it's already happening now. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Districts like Lindsay Unified in California show what's possible when we abandon the outdated system of age-based progression and let learners move at their own pace according to their readiness. Schools like Van Ness Elementary in Washington, D.C. shows what's, what's possible when schools attend to the whole child every day, not just in reactive movements. As an example above, highlight partnerships are crucial in helping reinvent schools to help young people recover, rediscover, and thrive. For far too long, schools have been separated from the assets of communities, even as students crave relevance in their education. Partnerships also enable schools to extend learning into out-of-school time. Community agencies and after-school partners play a vital role in providing essential services to children and families. The AASA and the 50-state after-school network are working together to alleviate the power of partnerships and the out-of-school time. A comprehensive after-school approach and coordination with the school district includes academic acceleration and catch-up, career exploitation, and physical activity, healthy eating, wraparound, and emergency support for children and families, and reinventing school entails forging the right partnership to construct not just a reimagined school day, but a reimagined network, network of systems and supports for young people embedded in the communities. The sheer exhaustion everybody from students and teachers and parents and administrators is feeling makes it tempting to hope for a return to pre-pandemic normal. But this would return us to the world of added burdens and band-aids. This would be the most unreasonable path of all. Returning to what school was like prior to February 2020 is not an option if we want future-driven education to occur in our country. Reinventing our education system is the great challenge and great opportunity on the other sides of today's crisis. We owe it all to adults and children and schools not to waste or not to waste it. So, what are your thoughts about this article? I'd like to hear your ideas because, I mean, some of it just sounds, you know, like um, 
That's a good idea. I mean, it's a good idea to redesign schools because schools aren't working. But let's not kid ourselves. As John Taylor Gatto always reported, schools are exactly as they're intended. And people wanted them. There are certain people that really wanted them to be the way that they are. So is this redesign really a redesign? Or is it more of trying to get more students indoctrinated and more people controlled? And some of these people's ideas kind of lead me to think that because of the language they're using. Um, including when they're talking about all the different things that schools, you know, are supposed to be giving and are giving, and including, you know, psychological needs and, and skip tracing. I mean, that's another word for, you know, tracing families, creating a reporting system where people tell on each other. So there's some things here that are concerning, to me at least. And I do believe there needs to be an education redesign. Remember, I've said before, school and education is not the same thing. And you cannot get an education in, in schools that are compulsory schools that have an agenda. You're not going to get an education out of that. And education is a lifetime journey. You never quit learning. So there's some serious issues with this idea. But I did want to share because I thought it was interesting. Um, you know, somebody had put this article together and are sharing these ideas. So I wanted to share that with you. Okay, so moving on to the next article. Um, let's see here. Sorry, I got to switch again. All right, this is from the Ohio Ed Updates, State and Local Education News. And Marietta Times reports that DeWine is right not to issue a blanket mandate himself, but rather to let school districts make their own decisions when it comes to masks. But that means it's up to the school districts to do the right thing. Parents, too, should consider getting their children vaccinated and offer support to those who are being smart and wearing masks, even in districts where it is not required and perhaps not all their friends are receiving the same support. So this was titled, Parents Can Help Schools During Rise in COVID. It was an editorial that was done. So, I mean, I think I've made it clear before where I kind of stand on this stuff. But, um, yeah. Now, so, and also in Ohio, Richland Source reports the Ohio Department of Transportation known as ODOT, O-D-O-T, has an opportunity for you and your partners to apply for funding to develop and implement projects that enable and encourage children to safely walk or bike to school. ODOT Safe Routes to School program is funded at $4 million annually for an infrastructure improvement such as pedestrian and bicycle crossing improvements, new or improved sidewalks and bike racks and non-infrastructure activities such as walk-to-school days, bike rodeos, public awareness campaigns, or educational programs. The article was titled Safe Routes to School Funding, and the applications are now open if anybody's interested in pitching some ideas. My ideas um, regarding school safety, I mean, it doesn't really align with this, and um, is actually, you know, there's a lot of, our U.S. military that are retired or not on active duty any longer. And I've thought for some time, you know, schools should be employing them to protect our children. Maybe that could be part of this as well. So the, there should be plenty of jobs for our military personnel. And why not, right? So maybe share that idea in your communities. We'd really love to see that happen. Cleveland.com reports that uh, North Ridgeville School Superintendent and Mayor work together to keep community informed. Says Mayor Kevin Cor Corin, North Ridgeville City School Superintendent, and Roxanne Ramsey Casario, and Assistant Superintendent David Pritt, held a public meeting January 5th at the North Ridgeville Academic Center. 
The first in a series of joint meetings taking place this year is to inform and update parents on happenings in the school district and city. About half a dozen residents attended the first meeting. Southwestern, oh, I'm sorry, I'm switching topics now. Um, <laughs> the Columbus D Dispatch reports that Southwestern subject matter. Students and families have many resources to help prep for life after high school. A great day deal has changed for students in terms of college admissions process over the years. This is especially true given the effects of the global pandemic and the choice to attend college after high school comes with additional considerations. I Know I Can is a community-based partner in the Columbus College Access Program, facilities, or which facilitates students' resources within schools and that are grounded in inspiring and enabling and supporting students' post-secondary pursuits. Cleveland.com also reports that $8 million learning center is taking shape in Ottawa Hills. The Ottawa Hills High School junior, Keenan Mayhe, or Mayhe maybe, um, Mayhe, had no time to spare late Monday afternoon in the middle of ba a basketball game with Swanton High School. Regardless, he stepped out for a minute to mingle with those assembling for an Ottawa Hills High School open house showcasing the Foundry Learning Space, a former outdoor courtyard in the process of being turned into an $8 million indoor learning center geared towards student collaboration and tutoring, mentoring, and research. Okay, and then this, the next news story I have for you is from ASCD Smart Brief. Uh, they recently did a study on bullying fell online in person during the pandemic. Bullying both in person and online dropped according to a national research study from Boston University that looked at internet search data from March 2020 to Mar or to February 2021. The findings showed searches related to bullying were 33% lower and cyberbullying searches were 27% lower than they had that I'm sorry than would have been expected based on trends. The full story can be read at Education Week. Okay, also under transfer, transformational leadership, principal how hive mind in quotations affects schools. A hyperactive hive mind can disrupt schools, asserts Michael Gaskill, the principal at Hammersfield Middle School in New Jersey. In this blog post, Gaskell shares strategies to help quiet this type of groupthink, focusing on both internal and external solutions. If you want to see those, it's um, under Tech and Learning. So, and it's titled Principal, and then How Hive Mind Affects Schools. You could type that into the internet. Cyber attack shows vulnerability of school tech vendors. Final site, a web hosting and communications firm that works with 8,000 schools and colleges in more than 100 countries says there is no evidence that client data was compromised during a recent cyber attack in which many school websites went dark. Amy McLaughlin, cybersecurity director for the consortium School Networking says, Besides an uptick in cyber attacks against schools, there, there now appears to be a rise in attacks targeting vendors that support schools. Isn't that interesting? Uh, a program uh, brings STEM to uh, West Virginia County Schools. Students in Jackson County, West Virginia, are exploring STEM fields such as computer science through Project Lead the Way. High school teacher Tony Burke says the program program's classes help students try subjects in low-pressure setting before they go to college. 
and have even led some students to discover their interest in a field that they'd not previously considered. Jackson Newspapers reported this. And I chuckle a little bit when I'm reading this because, number one, I don't really completely support like STEM learning. I think it's just another, I, I support science, you know, people learning science and, and hands-on experiences, um, including Montessori schools and stuff like that. But I don't understand why they have to combine all of these things together um, in the way that they do, I guess I should say. But knowing a lot of students that have went to college, even in post-secondary enrollment, I mean, I have reports that the English and math courses in college are a lot easier than they are in high school and more enjoyable. So, yeah, it kind of makes you think, kind of makes you wonder about that statement, the way that they are presenting it, I guess. It makes, makes me wonder. <clears throat> okay, let's see. The next story is I have is from Smart Brief on EdTech. Uh, let's see here what they have. They have a lot of repeated stuff, so I want to make sure I don't repeat anything. Okay, it says how schools are recruiting amid Omicron. I think we did cover this a little bit before. It says some colleges have adjusted campus visits amid the emergence of Omicron variant, including canceling tours, closing visitor centers, or allowing only outdoor tours, all while focusing on online tours and events. The pandemic has shown universities that using a combination of on-campus and online recruiting is effective if the content is meaning meaningful, says Gil Rogers, Executive Vice President of Platform Q Education. The story was picked up by Inside Higher Ed, if you're interested in reading more about it. Okay, emerging technology in schools. Um, how video prep can strengthen science labs. Ed Utopia reports that videos can help students prepare ahead of time for science lab, maximizing class time for learning, according to high school science teacher Allison Stone. In this article, Stone shares strategies to help teachers create their own video instruction for labs. Now, kind of interesting because they act like this is kind of a big deal and um, homeschoolers have been done, doing this sort of thing for a really long time and there's all kinds of things even on YouTube that can be incorporated you know for students in charter school or homeschool or whatever so um, yeah all right just a moment Okay, ASCD Smart Brief. There are some states that are, um, the full story, the 74, reporting that some states not offering data on student assessments. There is inconsistency in how states are reporting student assessment information, with almost one-third not publicly reporting any information about participation or achievement writes Christine Pitts and Travis Pillow, both of the Center for Reinventing Public Education. In this analysis, Pitts and Pillow assert the officials should rethink assessments in part by giving a fuller picture of students' academic needs. When I read this, I think of um, the classic learning test. If you don't know what that is and your children are in high school, you can visit our website to learn about it, newheightseducation.org, um, or you can look it up online as well. But, um, I mean, I believe in assessments. I believe it can give you a picture. I mean, it, it sh shouldn't be, you know, I mean, assessments shouldn't be overlooked. They, they do have their uses, and we use them. We partner with breeding and mass success labs and 
um, teach type read and spell which are really wonderful and then again if you want if you have a high schooler and you want them tested the classic learning test covers like the whole person testing and it's really wonderful i mean you can earn scholarships as well to different colleges so i really um, encourage you to look into those things on our website you can find our assessments on our learning annex which is school.newheightseducation.org and you go um over to i think it let me take a look i want to tell you something that's not correct so it's under parents and then you go tracking student growth just click on tracking student growth when you get to that page and um, I think it'll be very helpful for you. Trauma weary students help organize reset event. Students responses to Fairfoot High School's reaction to recent traumatic events affecting student led assistant principal Rose Lupinaki to work with some seniors on a day long reset conference that offered school-wide sessions on mental health, suicide, sexual violence prevention, self-care, and leadership. Students of the Colorado School said holding the conference during school hours showed that administrators were listening. The full story was picked up by the Daily Camera in Boulder, Colorado. If you want to look it up. Also, a report finds that 59% of schools meet the FCC broadband standard. Only 59% of schools provide broadband internet speeds of at least one megabyte per second per student. The goal set by the Federal Communications Commission. The report from the Connected Nation also finds the medium cost per megabyte is $1.39, down from $7 in 2015. The full story can be found at Tell Competitor, so T-E-L-E-C-O-M-P-E-T-I-T-O-R, if you're interested. <clears throat> Let's see here. Schools to get $10 million COVID-19 test monthly. The federal government plans to distribute $10 million coronavirus test to schools nationwide each month. The Biden administration said today, this was dated, um, I think on the 12th of January, plans calls for providing 5 million rapid tests and 5 million PCR tests. The full story was picked up by NBC News and National Public Radio. Hey, what are your thoughts on that one? Um, I mean, I don't think it belongs anywhere in the schools. And it, just they're playing a really dangerous game. And it is a game to them. I mean, a lot of people don't think so. But, uh, you know, government does not belong in public schools. And in South Dakota, a bill would ban teaching action civics. Public schools and colleagues in South Dakota would be prevented from teaching so-called action civics in which students are required or compelled to protest or lobby as part of a course to earn a grade or course credit under legislation drafted by Governor Christy Noem. This comes from no one proposed a separate bill banning the teaching of critical race theory. Okay, um, the full story was picked up by the Argus Leader in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And a Kentucky bill addresses mental health advance. The Kentucky House Committee has announced a measure that would allow students excused absences for mental and behavior health reasons. A separate state house committee approved a bill that would provide relief, including temporary housing and mental health counseling to people affected by recent tornadoes. The full story can, was picked up by the Associated Press and Spectrum News. And in Alaska, students learn about food sources on moose hunt. Students enrolled in an outdoor explorations class at the Nick 
Giski Middle and High School in Alaska are learning firsthand where their food comes from. The students learn hunting skills and protocols, including on a recent moose hunt, as well as outdoor survival and wildlife ecology. The New York Times had picked up this story if you want to look into that. I think it is time for a commercial break, so we will be right back. Hello, listeners. If you're enjoying the New Heights show on education and want to support or donate to our organization, please visit www.newheightseducation.org. And while you're there, check out our online store at new-heights-educational-group.myshopify.com. Hello, welcome back to the New Heights Show on Education. This is Pamela Clark, and we're going over news stories um, from across the U.S. and the world. So let's get right back into it. Still a lot to cover, and we're already halfway through the show. That went really quickly. So North Homestead's Chestnut Intermediate School unites student body with Disability Awareness Day. Cleveland.com uh, reports that tenants of social and emotional learning range from students understanding how to manage their emotions and make better decisions to also achieve goals and treat others with kindness. Regarding the latter, Chestnut Intermediate School students this year are learning compassion through various extracurricular initiatives. The idea for Disability Awareness Day, as well as Helping Hands Club, came from Chestnut Intermediate School Administrative Secretary Vicki Lofton, who saw a need among the 250 grades, um, grades three to five students. In January is School Board Recognition Month. Millersburg Barton Bargain Hunter Buckeye Career Center is joining more than 700 school districts throughout Ohio to celebrate January as School Board Recognition Month. Our Buckeye Career Center Board of Education members are truly dedicated to our students, staff, and stakeholders, Superintendent Bob Alsept said. Many of them also serve on the Partner School Board of Education. The time away from their family is very valuable to keeping us in the, on the proper course. This is a, an opportunity for all of us to say thank you for a job well done. <laughs> okay. And then um, Junior Achievement focuses on financial literacy, entrepreneurship in 2022. And Youngstown Business Journal reported that Junior Achievement of Mahoning Valley is inviting participants for its lineup of financial literacy and entrepreneur programs this year. Programs include JA High School Financial Literacy, JA Titan Virtual Challenge, and JA Start My Business. JA Financial Literacy is a one semester educator led evidence based course that teaches high school students foundational personal finance skills according to a release. Four course units include employment and income, money management, credit, debt, and keeping your finances safe and planning for the future. I will remind you that New Heights Educational Group on our Learning Annex does have a financial literacy course that is free. Um, it is under our monthly membership, though, so you do have to purchase a $6 a month membership fee to, to have access to our free courses. But we have over 1,280 free courses for you to take in all different subject matters, So, and including some foreign languages. So uh, check it out. It may be really beneficial to you and your family. And um, we also, last year in 2021, we launched um, an all-free music program as well. So check it out. You know, there's a lot of really great stuff on there. The next stories I have for you are from Homeschool Legal Defense. They are one of our partners and affiliates. And um, we received uh, emails from them. And so this is from that. Okay, so a homeschooled soccer player aims at going pro. 
Kristen Boos went from top scorer on homeschool club team to playing at the Holly's highest college at level. In two years, she hopes to earn a spot on the professional team on a professional team overseas. Sorry a second, my computer is running slow. Okay, and then another story they're reporting on is homeschool legal defense helps grad reach new heights as crane operator. As the state refused to recognize this homeschool graduate's high school diploma and demanded he take the GED in order to enter a crane oper operator apprenticeship. And you can go, you could type that in and, and it'll bring up the whole article, but we'll probably be sharing... They'll probably be in our magazine. Um, you should do share these articles in there. Okay, a second. Sorry, getting there. <laughs> Lots of uh, repeated information. All right, here's one from Ohio Head Ed Update, state and local news. And Uh, deciding whether to delay or cancel school due to weather is an in-depth process. Steubenville, Fox 9. As we get set for more winter weather ahead this season, students and parents across the Ohio Valley are vigorously trying to figure out if their school's school is delayed or canceled. And for the Bridgeport Exempted Village School District, the ones making that decision are also the ones observing the roads. An ASCD smart brief reports um, says, can credit recovery improve graduation rates? Utah and Michigan have dedicated federal relief funds for education to support credit recovery programs. According to an analysis by Help Kids Recover, the goal is to help students stay on track to graduate high school. And this article highlights the pros and cons of such a program. You could find the full story in K-12 Dive. And CTE Partnership focuses on artivism and fashion. The New Work School of Fashion and Design is a career and technical education partnership between New Work Public Schools in New Jersey and the New School Parsons School of Design. The school program prepares students for careers in the fashion industry, including a focus on act or artivism, excuse me, art plus activism, which teachers which teaches about adaptability and inclusivity in fashion. The full story can be found in district administration. FCC broadband funds for schools, libraries, nearly $4.2 billion. The Federal Communications Commission is doling out another $361 million in broadband subs subsidies dollars to schools and libraries, making its, to date, total nearly $4.2 billion. Today's funding announcement will provide 700,000 more school children with digital tools they need to connect with teachers and classmates. FCC Chair Jessica Rosenworcel said, The full story is on Next TV Multi Channel News. <clears throat> And then um, I went back to school in person. It's not normal and neither are we. 
Allison Rodman, founder of The Learning Loop, offers a guide to school communities for navigating what will come to be known as the interpandemic space, a time between what our traditional notions of schooling once were and what they have and what they have the potential to become. Okay, just a moment. Let's see here. Middle Web Smart Brief. Let me check our time here. Okay, we've got a few more minutes before our next commercial. Um, how to make Shakespeare accessible to middle schoolers. Educators can help interest middle school in the works of Shakespeare by replacing strict performances with improv or changing an element of the story. Educator Matthew James Friday writes, Friday also suggests emphasizing the non-acting roles involved in putting on a performance, such as creating sound effects, making props to engage more students. The full story is at Edutopia, but I will say if you live in the Fort Wayne or Northwest Ohio area, the Civic Theater of Fort Wayne offers a lot of these opportunities already. Um, and you can literally be part of putting a whole set together, you know, acting, whatever. So they have workshops as well, but we really advocate for them. And, and I've been a ticket coordinator with them for a very long time. So you might want to check into them if you live in our area at all. And then a teacher says that uh, students are learning how to learn. Students' social skills have rebounded faster than their academic skills following the isolation of virtual learning earlier in the coronavirus pandemic, says John Fromonti, a fifth grade social studies and science teacher at a school in New York. Fromonti says lessons content is less, than, less of an issue for students than the ability to learn which students are relearning skills such as focusing in the classroom and retaining information. North Country Public Radio in Canton, New York reported on this story. Virtual IEP meetings, EdTech aid, special ed compliance. Some school districts are using education technology supplements and virtual individualized education programs in the meetings that include parents to better address the needs of students with disabilities as the pandemic continues. Phyllis Wolfram, Executive Director of the Nonprofit Council of Administrators of Special Education says, without federally approved flexibility on equity rules, some school systems have come under fire for not complying with or falling behind in students' IEPs, according to Case and the Advocacy Institute. K-12 Dive reported on this. They will say that if parents don't really stay active and proactive in getting the IEP, even if you're homeschooled, they have to supply you one for free. But... Um, and I don't want to say have your kids tested all through school, but if you want them to go to college and if they may need services, you need to ask for those before they graduate so they can take those on to college. And again, that is free to homeschool families and public school families. And if your state or area offers an advocate, you really should look into that too because um, you want to make sure that your your interests are are met and, and your needs are met and sometimes schools fall short on really offering what's needed so you do need a family advocate for that <clears throat> okay just a moment switching again 
Okay, Ohio head updates. Cleveland NBC3 reports that Mayfield High School Junior creates math app to help struggling students. Actually, I think I shared this before. Um, let me see if I get the name of it. It's called Achilles Math, and it's for students in kindergarten through seventh grade. And um, again, you can look up Cleveland NBC. You could type in Muhammad Zoraz, or you can just type in Achilles Math. I'm sure you'll be able to find it if you want to check out that app. Um, resource officers teaching internet safety in Hancock County. Tiffin Advertiser Tribune reports that with, students, with school resource officers from the Hancock County Sheriff's Office planning to be in local classrooms this month teaching internet safety, now might be a good time for parents and guardians to reinforce those lessons at home. Sheriff's Deputy Matt Crouch, a resource a resource officer for Van Buren Local Schools, said an effort will be made to review the do's and don'ts of internet safety with all students in a way that is age appropriate. Parents and guardians of students in kindergarten through third grade can expect information to be sent home to. And LEAP program expansion rated success at Mid-Ohio Education Service Center. Richland Source reported that the LEAP program provides instruction and related services to students from individual school districts who require a more specialized education setting than is available in the public school. LEAP has eight total locations servicing much of northern Ohio, including one at Crestview Local Schools. The Mid-Ohio Educational Service Center assisted in opening a new location in Mansfield at the ESC for the start of the 2021-2022 school year. Youngstown Business Journal reports that helping Columbiana County students find path to careers. The Columbiana County Business Advisory Council held a second vision casting forum on Thursday at Kent State University Salem campus. School district leader representatives of local agencies and business leaders gathered to discuss ways to create successful career pathways for all students in Columbiana County. In the Galapagos Galley, I know I'm saying that wrong, Galapagos Daily Tri Tribune, uh, mock trial returns to go Galia Academy. Students at the Galia Academy High School are going to court this week, but not for any real crime committed. For the first time in over a decade, junior and seniors at the high school will be participating in mock trial competitions. In Ohio, the mock, the mock trial program for high school students in Ohio, organized by the Ohio, Cent Ohio Center for Law Related Education, or OCLRE, mock trial is an extremely rigorous academic experience requiring students to hone their writing, public speaking skills, memorization, and analytical skills to best strategize a case and perform. That's pretty cool. What do you think of that? I think that's pretty neat. Any hands-on stuff like that is really great for students. <clears throat> and New York City schools could return to virtual learning. New York City Mayor Ari Gadam said he is considering allowing schools to resume virtual learning while the coronavirus pandemic continues to be a challenge. Adams says he still feels that school is the safest place for a child, but we, but quote, we do have to be honest that there's a substantial number of children, for whatever reason, parents are not bringing them to school. The Associated Press covered this report. It's time for that commercial break. We will be right back. This podcast is brought to you by Silicon Valley High School, the world's fastest growing, video-based, self-paced, teacher-supported, fully accredited online school that's recommended by more than 96% of students. Take individual courses at just $95 each, 
or earn your high school diploma at any age. Check us out at svhs.co. Hello, and welcome back to the New Heights Show on Education. This is your host, Pamela Clark. Okay, the next article um, we have for you is Honor Indigenous Knowledge Systems in Schools. Indigenous knowledge systems should be honored and affirmed in classrooms, asserts Helen Thomas, the Office of Indian Education's Professional Learning Specialist for the Arizona Department of Education. In this commentary, Thomas describes the history behind indigenous knowledge systems, which are ways indigenous people make sense of the world around them. The full story was picked up by Ed Surge. And in New Mexico, the district remained closed after a cyber attack. I think we covered this on an earlier show. Um, But it says a New Mexico school district is hoping to reopen schools on Tuesday after a cyber attack this week on a student database led it to cancel classes. The cyber attack affected a system that stores students' emergency contact information attendance records, and other data. The Associated Press and the Journal both covered this story. And how are schools spending COVID-19 relief funds? Most school districts are using at least some of their federal coronavirus relief funds for their workforce. Some are learning or building upgrades, such as heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. According to analysis by Future Ed, which worked with Burbio on the data, the data also shows schools spending funds on education technology. The full story was covered by the journal. The Supreme Court blocks OSHA vaccine testing mandate. The U.S. Supreme Court on Thursday blocked the OSHA rules on workplace coronavirus vaccines and testing in a 6-3 to three vote, but upheld a similar regulation for health care facilities. The OSHA rules, if upheld, would have applied to, to schools in 26 states. The full story was covered by K-12 Dive in Education Week. And on Smart Brief on Special Education, (laughs) Donut Shop offers job mentoring for students. A special education teacher, Abra Shukarit, says she was inspired to open a donut shop employing students with disabilities after talking with student parents about post-school opportunities. Maggie's and more as job coaches who help employees with disabilities navigate work responsibilities and practice skills. Shukert, I'm sorry, Shukert says, I'm sorry, I know I really butchered her name. Uh, The full story was at WJW TV in Cleveland. And I'm not familiar with this, but um, anything, you know, with resources to autism, I always try to share. But do your own research because I really don't know anything about this person. Um, It says, podcast highlights abilities of people with autism. Jackson Roble was a sportscaster even before creating his podcast. His parents said the Jackson Roble show, show, a podcast with over 1,500 followers, that recently logged episode 250 raises awareness about people with autism. The story was picked up by the Daily Reflector in Greenville, North Carolina. This is from the Foundation Center. It says University of Haifa received $16 million 
for Climate Change Initiative. I'm chuckling already. The gift from the Cadiz Family Charitable Fund will establish the International Faculty Initiative of Global Climate Change with an initial emphasis on marine and coastal ecology research. Okay then, um, Community Foundation. News and staff announcements from community foundations in Connecticut, Indiana, Maine, Massachusetts, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, Virginia, Washington, and um, yeah, okay, and in Washington um, has announced that Hartford Foundation for Public Giving is has a three-year $215,000 grant to Friends of Kenny Park toward the hiring of an executive director. The park, which is considered a significant asset for Hartford, especially its North End neighbors, provides open space and myriad activities that promote community health and connection. The grant is part of the Foundation's Higher Opportunity Neighborhoods Portfolio, and the funding will help the Friends of Kenny Park create more opportunities for safe and healthy outdoor living. <clears throat> the reason they named all of those is because there's been a lot of different foundations giving a lot of money in those areas that I named. And you can see the whole list of that on philanthropynewsdigest.org and look up Community Foundation Update, and it was dated January 15th. And Harrisburg University receives $1 million for an agricultural center. The gift from the giant company will help the university's Center for Advanced Agriculture and Sustainability focus on localized sourcing through high-tech food and agriculture. Oh, just a moment. Let me see what this was. Okay, more from the Foundation Center. Um, tech leaders pledged $2.5 million for dog aging project. The pledges from several donors will fund the latest canine health study in the world. The largest, not late, latest, largest canine health study in the world, which is aimed at helping companion dogs and people living longer and healthier lives together. And FM Kirby Foundation awards $14.1 million in grants in 2021. In keeping with its philosophy of making long-term commitments to effective programs that foster self-reliance and work to build strong communities, the foundation has funded more than half of its 2021 recipients for the last 20 years. Bear with me. Okay, also from the Foundation Center, UPenn receives $18 million for first-generation undergraduates. The gift from the alumni, Scott um, Leffer, Schleffer, and his wife Elena will support Penn First Plus P1P, an initiative created in 2018 that provides academic support, financial aid, wellness programs, and career services for first generation and lower income students. And Dartmouth receives $40 million for need for need blind international admissions. The single largest scholarship gift in Dartmouth's 253-year history will enable Dartmouth to offer near-blind admissions to all undergraduate applicants while meet, 
meeting 100% of demonstrated need regardless of citizenship. Effective immediately. And Lori M. Tisch, Illumination Fund Awards Arts and Mental Health Grants. Awarded through, through the fund's new Arts and Mental Health Program and expansion of its Art and Health Initiative, the grants will fund small and mid-sized nonprofits using the arts as a vehicle to address mental health challenges and fight stigma that is a barrier to seeking help. Wow, we are out of time already. Um, thank you for joining me for another in education in the new show. Don't forget that starting very soon, um, which I believe on, check here. I'm not sure if it was, I know it's coming up the next week or so. Um, we're going to be starting our first ever history of civil rights and civil rights kind of modern times anything civil rights is going to be launching our new podcast with hope host barbara bolin her show will be on sundays and um, then don't forget to tune in on fridays around 6 p.m for olenia tibet or tibet olenian her show um that she does topics that affect youth so and then my show, this show that you're listening to right now, is always shared Wednesdays by 6 o'clock. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Don't forget to rate us and follow us on your podcast player. Check out our show page, radio.newheightseducation.org, for monthly announcements and other happenings.